In this video, we're gonna bring science to barefoot running. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna show some scientific research to prove my advocacy for barefoot running. If you've been watching this channel for any time, you know that I'm a big proponent of longevity and optimal health and a key component of that is great posture and great posture I believe starts from the ground up and so with the videos that I've created to fix your flat feet to fix other postural ailments is to get you to live a better life an optimal life overall and so I've decided to put in the description below a link to a PDF that shows those flat feet fixes that I presented in that video two years ago as a program because as a, uh, as a personal trainer I understand that a program is the best way to create adherence and I understand that maybe if you've done the exercise and found any benefit in them you'd probably do them maybe one week maybe two weeks and if you saw any improvement you'd probably think that you've gotten far enough and you'd probably stop and so I've created a program to make it easier for you to adhere to the regimen that I've created to fix your flat feet. Now in this video I'm gonna go on to show you this research paper that was done in 1987 titled Running Related Injury Prevention Through Barefoot Adaptations. This was published in 1987 by the American College of Sports Medicine. Now first thing I think is if they knew that in 1987 that conventional shoes weren't good for you and this is when the de facto shoe of that time was a converse Chuck Taylor now if they knew that then and we consider Chuck Taylor closer to a minimal shoe now com uh, compared to the permutations of running shoes that we see in the mainstream if they knew that then how in 2019 have shoes become what they've become now with extreme toe spring extreme heel height, extreme arch height, uh, proving again that this is a manufacturer-led uh, decision, not from actual uh, purveyors or athletes. We haven't asked for these changes. It is fashion, it is marketing that has created these changes and not functionality. Now, in this research paper, they go on to explain that the high uh, propensity for injury in running related sports was due to the athletic footwear being worn especially amongst the developed countries and showed that in populations where people were unshod which means no footwear in their training that they had less fragility that they did not suffer from many of the common ailments that they suffered in 1987 and to this day, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, and many others, knee issues, and that in underdeveloped countries or undeveloped countries, that the group or the population that wore footwear were the only segment of the population that actually had injuries, uh, running related injuries, and that the population that did, did not have footwear or did not train in footwear did not have any reported injuries and showing that wearing these conventional shoes actually atrophies uh, the foot actually makes the foot more fragile because it's not getting the sensory impact or feedback needed to perform now in 1987 s shoes did not look like what they look like now I, I the they are far more extreme in the padding, padding, in the toe spring, in the arch height than they were in 1987. And so one has to wonder if this research was available in 1987 showing that these shoes were actually the lead cause of the injuries, how have they uh, mutated to what they have become now in 2019 where the pads are for the heel are even thicker than they were in 1987 when they knew that 
even as thin as those pads were in 1987, uh, think of a, a Chuck Taylor uh, Converse, uh, think of how minimal that would be seen as uh, today in comparison to what the modern shoes look like. If they knew this research back then, why didn't they change it? Why has the shoes uh, become more of a crutch? Instead, as explained here, direct contact with natural surface produced plantar sensation and intrinsic foot shock absorption. Again, now we're with wearing a shoe, you create a rigid system because there is a material, a rigid material that is between your foot and the environment with the terrain. Now, just so you see the nerve endings, the numerous nerve endings that I have on my hand, uh, we, uh, palm of my hand, we also have numerous nerve endings on the sole of our feet. And these shoes are getting in the way of that feedback. And we need to make the, we need protection in certain environments from, from the terrain, but we need to make that as minimal as possible. We need to be able to have shoes that are as flexible and malleable as possible so we can get as much information from the terrain as possible to make the adjustments uh, within our nervous system. It goes on to further explain that five examples of countries, trainers that primarily train barefoot having no issues no running related issues. They've taken in this subject group of 17 athletes, recreational runners, that uh, 14 men, th three women, that they decided to run this trial or experiment on. And what they found was that by running barefoot, indoors and outdoors, and walking barefoot, that they were able to shorten that medial arch. By shortening that medial arch, that means there was a rise in the arch. This proving that you can alleviate your flat feet syndrome and many other maladies uh, with foot health by just being barefoot. No shoes, no orthotics can help more than actual activity daily barefoot. It goes on to illustrate the changes in the foot telemetry and positioning because of conventional shoes, moving the big toe laterally instead of medially, ruining the center of balance for the foot, shifting your center of, of balance. And we, as I've discussed in prior videos, that once you shift that balance or that center point, you'll also create other postural maladies. But because of that shift from the feet, your, the rest of your body, the hips, the knees, the ankles, make other compensations for that misalignment in your foot. It goes on to further prove amongst the group, once they were detrained, that they saw little to no change once they had improved their foot positioning. And that the control group, out of that their group, they had numerous people who showed a worsening of foot positioning, worsening of their um, arch height through just continuing wearing conventional shoes, okay? And it, it goes to summarize that barefoot activity is the optimal activity and that the only reason that you or that anyone is wearing conventional shoes is due to social constraint. Now they do note that you would want to protect yourself or your feet from the environment in certain extreme situations. And that's understandable. But what we have been marketed is fashion in the guise of functionality. There is no functionality in conventional shoes, the way that they are designed, the way that they're asking you to move, that the actual functionality is inherent in us. It is how we were born. It is by going barefoot. Now for modern days, do you need some protection? Do you want to walk and, and step in glass and, and other things that other hazards that may be in the environment? No. And I'm not an advocate of putting yourself in danger either. And I understand that you would want some protection. But let's be clear here that 
conventional shoes, conventional designs is not optimal for us. And that at worst, we should be wearing minimal shoes. At best, we are barefoot. This is a quick video. I'll leave the link for this research paper below. I appreciate the feedback. I enjoy reading your comments. Uh, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much.